Does medications contribute to dementia and Alzheimer's disease? We are going to discuss about that today. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pinky, I'm a clinical pharmacist practitioner. Today I'm going to discuss about some medications which are associated with um, dementia, Alzheimer's disease. I have chosen this topic because in practice I often come across these medications and uh, and I also ask patients like, you know, do you have the side effects because of these medications? And most of them are yeah, like, yes. So how these medications are associated with dementia? I'm going to discuss about that. So these medications are basically um, known as anticholinergic medications. I'm also going to give a table, okay, which contains all these medications. These anticholinergic medications, basically they are used for many medical conditions such as Parkinson disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, depression. Um, they can also be used for um, acid reflux like simetidine. Um, there are many, many examples of anticholinergic medications and some medications has got strong anticholinergic effect for example, amitriptyline, chlor, uh, chlor, uh, phenyramine, chlorpromazine, then clomipramine, clozapine, hydroxyzine, emipramine, nortriptyline, oxybutynine, paroxetine, procyclidine, promethazine, scopolamine, tolteridone. So this has got strong anticholinergic effects. Obviously, I'm not going to mention all I'm not going to mention all the medications, but some of them, some with moderate anticholinergic effects are like amantidine, carbamazepine, um, oxycarbamazepine, pethidine. And the ones with mild anticholinergic effects can be like simetidine, alvirine, atenolol, bupropion, colchicine, diazepam, fentanyl, furosemide, haloperidol, hydralazine hydrocortisone, loperamide, morphine, nifidipine, prednisolone, ranitidine, theophylline, timolol, trazodone, warfarin. Now, why these medications are of concern if they are used for long term? What can happen and how is it related to dementia and Alzheimer's disease? The classical side effects of anticholinergic medications are like blurry vision, dizziness, confusion, um, constipation, dry eyes, urinary retention, um, co cognitive impairment. And sometimes because of these anticholinergic medications, patient can have a fall. And if an elderly patient have a fall, that means fracture can happen, right? And if there is a fracture, so obviously um, it can be quite devastating sometimes for many patients. Now, I'm going to go into more details about why these medications are related to Alzheimer's disease and dementia and about the researches, the trials that has been done. Now, Previously, it was thought that the association between anticholinergic medications and cognitive impairment, it is reversible on stopping the drugs. However, there are now reports stating that these problems might not be reversible. The side effects might not be reversible. And there are some researches that has you know um, that has been carried out and it has been established that for those using the anticholinergic medications which I have um, mentioned and many there are some more there is an increased risk of dementia and Alzheimer's compared with no use compared with no use so patients who are using these medications 
have a chance to develop Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Now, the risk increase was a small, uh, basically a 1.5 fold increased risk of dementia, um, increased risk of dementia in using this anticholinergics uh, regularly for three years. And the, basically the relationship was like dose dependent. So more the anticholinergic burden, more the uh, more medications with anticholinergic burden. That means the greater the risk of having dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And uh, so dementia was basically, it was found that dementia was basically associated with taking drugs with a higher anticholinergic burden. And the risk of dementia was basically higher with like the antidepressants and the anti Parkinson drugs. And uh, usually there is a calculator. Usually there is an online calculator, which is known as ACB calculator, anticholinergic burden calculator. And if I put the medications in that anticholinergic burden calculator, it will give me a figure. Okay, say for example, and amitriptyline's uh, anticholinergic burden is three. Uh, metazapine, most probably, it is like uh, one. So that means it's together. If somebody is using amitriptyline as well as metazapine, that means the anticholinergic burden is four. If any patient with anticholinergic burden of more than three, that means there is an increased risk of false confusion, dizziness, blurry vision, and there is an increased risk of falls with this, if the ACB is more than three. Now, what I always tend to um, explain to my patient is that like, if you absolutely need a medication, if there is like a clear indication, then obviously you have to have it. There's always like this risk is to benefit thing, all right? If you're benefiting more from a medications, despite the side effects, then yes, absolutely you need to have it. Now, there are medications with anticholinergic burden and such as for epilepsy, but you have to have these epileptic medications anyway. And the, the trials, the researches, it says, yes, it there is a possibility, but it didn't absolutely determine but that this is the cause uh, this is the this is the cause all right the anticholinergic burden is the cause for dementia and alzheimer's disease what i really want to do is I, I want to make sure i want to raise the awareness for patients this is very important like beware of the anticholinergic burden of the drugs look into the patient information leaflet like what medications you are having what are the side effects and uh, Try to put those medications in the calculator as well and see what is the anticholinergic burden score. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put a link as well to calculate the anticholinergic burden score. Now, if there are like reasonable alternatives to this anticholinergic medications, uh, then obviously go for those. Go for the alternatives. Find out if there is no alternative, then obviously you need to have it. And uh, discuss think about and review the side effects of these medications um like how you're going to handle the side effects of these medications and uh, also like try and to understand that whether this medications is for short-term use or for long-term use and uh, and also remember that for many patients stopping the uh, these offending medications may not be an option. So it's all about the quality of life, the risk, the benefit. Uh, all I want to say is um, take medications if you absolutely need them and if you think it's benefiting you. And uh, yeah, medications, they do come with benefit, but it comes with enormous amount of side effects as well. So be aware this video is to make uh, is to raise awareness thanks for watching and do like share and subscribe my channel and yes thank you so much stay safe bye for now